So uh, today I'm going to talking about the small molecule inhibitors against uh, uh, that coronavirus CDC like protease. So before I start, uh, this is the uh, antiviral drug development required a lot of uh, different scientists uh, from different disciplines. So we are working on this uh, uh, project, uh, like I said, for over 10 years and uh, uh, with uh, uh, various uh, scientists from uh, different institutes. So first of all, I, I would like to acknowledge our group for this presentation. First of all, uh, Yun Jung from Kansas State University, uh, she prepared that enzymes and then uh, initial inhibitor screening and then uh, I will show some of the FIT studies uh, she has done for the uh, for last uh, five years or so. So Bill is the uh, medicinal chemist. Uh, he is from uh, Wichita State University. So uh, all inhibitor design and synthesis were done in his lab. So Scott is the uh, medicinal, uh, he is the uh, structural biologist from University of Kansas. And we, he generated uh, numerous X-ray co-crystal graph of 3 c like pro with a uh, uh, human coronavirus uh, and uh, inhibitors. Uh, finally, Stanley from University of Iowa, uh, all of Amos and SARS-2 cell culture studies and animal studies are done in his group. So this is the clip protein process by coronavirus proteases. Coronavirus encodes these uh, huge uh, polyproteins. Both of them are bigger than 4,000 uh, amino acids in length. So this needed to be uh, processed by uh, viral uh, proteases. So one is a uh, papain-like protease. This is responsible for cleavage on this N terminus. And then uh, three c like protease here, uh, this is responsible for cleavage of all the C terminus. So uh, majority of this cleavage is done by 3CL Pro. That's why it's called main protease uh, two. So this is the 3 structure of uh, uh, 3CL Pro from SARS-2. This is dimer, and then each monomer has uh, three domains, like here, and then active site uh, is present between this monomer, uh, these two dimers, uh, uh, sorry, th these, uh, these domains, two domains. Uh, domain number one and two. So this is where substrate uh, intact with this enzyme, and then uh, the substrate based on based inhibitors, of course, uh, intact in this area. So this is close up of this uh, uh, this area, uh, active site, and then you see that S1, S2, and S1 prime. This is where the substrate, the residues of substrate amino acid will intact with this uh, protease. So here is the substrate specificity. So uh, as you see that the, uh, the sequences in here, uh, these sequences are recognized by uh, enzyme and uh, nomenclature is like uh, P1, P2, C4, and then P1 prime, P2 prime. So cleavage occur between this P1 and P1 prime. As you see here, this, this, all this cleavage site, uh, P1 position is glutamine. So, uh, the enzyme prefer the preference for this cleave site is glutamine. That's very obvious. And then P1 position in here, uh, enzyme recognize very small amino acid in here. And then P2 position, enzyme prefer that's a uh, uh, big uh, hydrophobic uh, amino acid in here, so on. So again, this is the uh, that inhibitor bound to that uh, uh, this active site. And like I said, that the, the P1, P1 and then P1, S1, the, that's the way these residues will, uh, will uh, intact. And then cleavage occur, uh, this uh, P1 and P, P1 position. And this is uh, cleavage occur by cysteine uh, of, uh, uh, of this enzyme. So that's why it's called cysteine protease. So this is the dipeptidyl protease inhibitor series we are working on for the last 10 years or so. Initially, we worked with the dipeptidyl and tripeptidyl compound against uh, the 3C, uh, 3C protease. Uh, this is from coronavirus and then 3 c like protease from coronavirus and also virus too. So P1, this is area P1 
and then this is P2. And then uh, for dipeptide compound, there's cap structure here. And for tripeptide compo uh, compound, there's another amino acid uh, putting in here. Uh, so the length is a little bit uh, bigger with the tripeptide compound. And here's G position in here. This is called overhead. So this residue intact with the uh, uh, enzyme. So uh, covalent bound to cysteine. Uh, reversibly or irreversible uh, bound occurred is here. So this G position is very important for uh, determining that inhibitor potency. So we utilize most of our compound, we utilize that aldehyde in this position uh, because we found out that aldehyde is the uh, best warhead uh, for this kind of uh, inhibitor against 3 cl pro. So we utilize some of ketoamide and then heterocycle uh, and also microreceptors in these positions. Uh, but we, we, like I said, aldehyde was the best uh, from our study. So for this 376, uh, you know, we, we synthesized this compound uh, about 10 years ago and then published uh, 10 years ago. And then uh, we group is, is working on these derivatives of this 376 for the uh, last 10 years or so. Uh, most of our study was uh, trying to optimize toward to uh, norovirus 3CL pro and also uh, coronavirus 3CL pro, mostly uh, most uh, coronavirus 3CL pro before SARS-2 outbreaks occur. So this G6376, this is the first directly acting anti-coronavirus effective in natural host infected with uh, FIPB. This is feline coronavirus uh, in cat. So now G376 was filed to FDA, uh, INAD, and also uh, pre-IND was filed for uh, COVID-19. Uh, like I said, uh, this G6376 is dipeptide compound. And this MPI-64 uh, is tripeptide compound. The size of this dipeptide is about 500, and this tripeptide compound is about 600 uh, molecular weight. And uh, against FIPB, each 50 was pretty similar. But if you look at the pharmacokinetics, uh, dipeptide compound is, is much, much better than tripeptide compound. That's why we are focusing on uh, dipeptide compound rather than a bigger uh, tripeptide compound. So before I, I, I show you that our studies on uh, human coronavirus, uh, I'm going to just briefly mention about FIPB studies with G376. Uh, FIP is the infection by feline coronavirus. And then you can see that the wet forms and dry forms occur. This is immune mediated, uh, mediated disease. And then this can, virus can uh, affect eyes and also uh, central nerve system too. Most importantly, once that uh, symptom appeared, 100% uh, of affect animal dies. So this is one of the dramatic like uh, viral infections in, you can see in animals, even humans. So mortality is 100%. Again, pharmacokinetics, we, we found out this 376 is pretty good. Uh, Half-life is about five hours. And then if you look at that, uh, we did uh, some studies like continuous injection once per day. Uh, the concentration is, is much greater than each 50 value. It's like a almost to 100, 1,000 fold better or uh, higher than uh, each 50 values. So that's maybe uh, that translates to the uh, antiviral effect in the animals. So first of all, we did uh, some experimental uh, FIP and then treated with uh, uh, this 376. This graph is like individual animals. And then, uh, then the once we inoculate a uh, uh, virus to the animals and then wait about two weeks and then start to chew uh, that treatment with the GC376. As you see here, fever developed about uh, like uh, 10 days. And then when we start to treat with uh, this GC376, fever dissolved within a couple of days. So these are all uh, demonstrating that uh, that uh, the response was very quick, and then uh, also 
or lymphopenia resolved within one week and ascites resolved in about one, one week. So because of these uh, studies, uh, we expanded our study uh, toward to uh, that naturally occurring FIP. In this case, uh, we did uh, some clinical trials at the UC Davis. So dosage was that uh, we used up uh, 15 milligram per kilogram um, twice daily for subcutaneous administration. And then the duration was uh, about two, 12 weeks. Uh, and then during the 12 weeks, we found out that no uh, severe, no notable uh, health issues uh, from the animals. And then importantly, we found no, no viral resistance has been observed during the span. So most importantly, over 90% of patients uh, respond well with the treatment. So response is like uh, they are very fast, only one or two days after treatment, conditions improved uh, kind of dramatically. And then uh, we, we kind of uh, found that some cats can be cured by this treatment, 12 week treatment. In this case, uh, most of these cured cases are uh, very uh, like a young kitten, uh, and then uh, they are symptom free after treatment for uh, now over three or two or three years of now. But some cats may require li lifelong treatment, uh, just like uh, HIV. And then I should mention that this FIP uh, infect macrophages, so that's kind of some similarity with uh, HIV or uh, antiviral drug development. So, uh, but in our case. Uh, we found out that uh, young, ca young cats can be cured by these uh, 12 weeks uh, of treatment. So against the uh, now human coronavirus, so we found out that this 376 is very effective against the various uh, human coronaviruses, but, but we, we, we found that the need for improvement for potency uh, and then try to get a, a broader spectrum uh, inhibitor against multiple coronaviruses. So uh, our optimization process focused on the cap structure. I will show you the uh, next slide. And then we used, utilized that uh, enzyme and cell-based assay from uh, the three uh, human coronaviruses. And then, of course, we did a lot of X-ray co-crystallograph uh, co uh, with these three enzymes. And then also with did us uh, in vivo testing. In, in this case, uh, we used that the uh, most uh, coronavirus uh, model. So optimization focused on X position in here. Like I, like I mentioned that the uh, GC 376 was uh, very good in pharmacokinetics and then in vivo efficacy. So we tried to uh, modify very small uh, area uh, like a residue, spring, small residues in this area. And this G position here again, this is very, very important. So we utilize that aldehyde and also we utilize that uh, bisulfite duct of aldehyde because aldehyde is very reactive. So you needed to kind of mask that reactivity by uh, putting bisulfite adduct. So bisulfite adduct compound uh, is like a prodrug uh, for aldehyde active metabolite. Here's the, some examples of uh, optimization in our studies. You, you can see some of cap structure uh, here, some variation of uh, a little bit different length and then uh, different residues in these cap structures. So this is kind of busy slide and this is summarized that uh, uh, the, our studies uh, against uh, MERS and SARS and SARS-2 in enzyme assay and then also cell-based assay. First of all, uh, we, like I said, we utilize aldehyde and then bisulfite adult. Uh, we prepared both uh, pairs of these two. And then uh, these compounds, all of these compounds are, are pretty good against all these, uh, uh, these three, uh, three human coronavirus enzymes and then these two uh, in cell-based assay. Uh, toxicity was uh, minimal, uh, except these two. But still, this toxicity is pretty, this fifty pretty high. So I think this is uh, still acceptable for for next uh, stages. So I highlighted these three 
uh, compound in here because uh, we used this, this compound for uh, further studies. For example, the 6E, uh, this is the best uh, compound among uh, these against SARS-2 in cell culture uh, uh, system. Also, this 6J in here, this is the best compound against most coronavirus in cell culture. So we utilize this compound for uh, further studies with the most coronavirus. Also, we, we use that uh, uh, GC376 as a reference for these studies. So uh, GC376, E50 was uh, determined 0.3 to 2 based on, on the laboratories uh, and then different settings of our cells. Uh, so it's, there's some variation uh, in here. So after we found that uh, uh, I SARS-2, our compounds are good against SARS-2. Uh, I should mention that previous slide, this is SARS-2 is based on uh, Vero E6 cells. So we wanted to confirm that the antiviral effect of these two compounds uh, against SARS-2 using primary airway epithelial culture. So in this case, we used just the uh, 6J and 6E, and then just one concentration due to the limitation of these cells. Uh, and uh, just one concentration, uh, which is uh, this concentration is uh, about two or, two or three fold greater than that E50 determined from that viral cells. And uh, we found out that the cells, the, this, at this concentration, still viral replication was reduced up to tenfold, even 100-fold uh, by this single uh, treatment with this compound. So we are very happy to see those inhibition uh, confirmed in, in, in human epithelial, airway epithelial cell culture. So actually, co-crystallograph, we generated numerous uh, this co-crystallization co to see if we can uh, improve that the potency by uh, modifying some areas. And also, uh, we see a lot of varying uh, is 50 or is 50 and then we wanted to see uh, what is the, the varying, effect, uh, varying degrees uh, in that uh, structural kind of uh, aspect. In this case, we use this slide shows that uh, 6J or 7J, this is bisulfite adductor of uh, 6J, and uh, against the MOS and SARS and SARS-2 in here. And then the, the binding was uh, similar in these three. And then you can see uh, glutamine surrogate in here. Uh, it, there is uh, like a three, um, the hydrogen bond occur with this glutamine surrogate. So that's the kind of, uh, uh, this is showing that the importance of glutamine surrogate in, in the uh, inhibitors in, in our city. And also you see uh, that numbers of hydrogen bond uh, a little bit like a conserved or somewhat different too. For example, this, uh, this compound against uh, MOS, you can see uh, the additional hydrogen bond occur by this cap structure. So that's why we, we, we thought that uh, this modifying cap structure can uh, improve the potential toward to specific uh, enzymes. In this case, 6J2, that was uh, coronavirus, something like that. So this is the overlap of that uh, same compound to three uh, enzymes. Again, that again uh, here, the most, most enzymes compound a little bit banded toward to S S4, and then that mediate some uh, additional amino acid, uh, uh, that hydrogen bond, and that is uh, kind of uh, responsible for that reduce that uh, potency, actually increase the potency uh, with this combination, 6J with uh, that most coronavirus. So uh, we found, so we are happy to see that the in vitro of like a uh, effect of this compound. So we wanted to see uh, if this are uh, also uh, good against uh, uh, that in vivo, in this case, uh, that animal model, mouse model. So we used that, uh, uh, that human, most coronavirus receptor, DPV4, napkin mouse with uh, 
a mouse adapted MERS coronavirus. In this combination, a viral infection induced a fatal uh, outcome, uh, mostly due to the lung pathology by this virus infection. The infection needed to diffuse alveolar damage and, and then edema and then high line of membrane formation and also infiltration of uh, lymphocyte in the alveolar septa. So this is very similar to the severe cases of a human MERS coronavirus infection. So the treatment started at 24 hours after virus inoculation and the dose was a uh, uh, 50 microgram per kilogram uh, via intraperitoneal uh, administration once per day. So this is the uh, result of that. Uh, 6J and 6H, uh, we tested these two in this model. And 6J, again, the H50 was about 40 uh, nanomole. And then that treatment of 6J, you see that uh, almost any, uh, all, all animals survived, while no treatment, uh, animals died within uh, uh, eight days or so. With 6H in here, 30% uh, of animals survived, and the difference of 6J and 6H was that uh, each, each 50 was uh, a little bit different, like a fourfold difference between these two. So 6J was 40, and then 6H was about 200 nanomole. So this is the weight gain, uh, recovery of weight, weight loss uh, after uh, that treatment, and this correlates well with uh, this survival analysis. So once we see that one day after treatment is good, so we delayed like uh, day two and day three, delayed the uh, start of treatment. And then again, that uh, majority of animal survived when we started uh, treatment day one. And day three, it seems that too late, but uh, day two, uh, some animals survived. Again, that uh, uh, weight loss, recovery of weight loss uh, uh, correlated with the survival analysis. So lung pathology, uh, and then lung titers uh, it, by this treatment. Uh, in this case, uh, lung titers uh, three days after uh, inoculation, and then uh, five days after uh, virus inoculation. And then you see the viral titers are uh, much reduced by the treatment. This is six day treatment. And also that uh, uh, histopathology, uh, edema, we did not see any edema by uh, when you, you treat uh, with uh, this 6J, uh, and also uh, highline membrane formation was uh, much reduced by the treatment. So this is the, just the showing uh, some uh, histopathology. So with, with treatment, you see that the uh, lung pathology, lung is kind of normal, but without treatment, uh, it's uh, severe that uh, interstitial uh, pneumonia. Minutes. Yes, uh, pneumonia, uh, you can see in, in this, uh, here, a lot of that uh, uh, the inflammatory uh, cell infiltrate in that uh, lung uh, spaces. So summary and, and, and conclusion. So uh, our study demonstrated that the uh, dipeptide compound series can be, uh, can serve as a platform suitable for structure guided design of, of one or two, one or multiple inhibitor against to uh, human coronavirus. For SARS-2, we generated highly potent inhibitor uh, in cell culture, we demonstrated in cell culture. And then, uh, then uh, using that mouse model with a uh, mouse coronavirus, that uh, this compound can be also effective uh, in the uh, in, in vivo. As we see that the FIP studies, that the compound itself, the series can be very effective uh, in the natural host too. So we, we, this study laid solid foundation for advancing this series further along the development pipeline. So again, uh, this is our group from Kansas State University and Wichita, uh, University of Kansas and University of Iowa. And then this, uh, this antiviral drug development, uh, you, you, you need a lot of, it cost, uh, it cost a lot. And then we are fortunate to have uh, an NIH grant for uh, studies and also animal studies uh, animal foundations, like FIP studies, animal foundation uh, funding. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Kim uh, secured this fund for this FIP studies. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Chang. Uh, 
wonderful presentation. Um, looking to see if there's any questions. So one, one question is that has come up repeatedly in sort of these kind of screens is um, the fact that the specific environment in which the drug is screened can make a, a huge difference um, on the actual sort of effect of the drug. Um, so so um, sort of in the absence of a uh, truly physiologic environment in which to test uh, to do perform drug screening, what do you see as the possible pros and cons of this type of approach? Well, I, I guess, uh, uh, that's a kind of uh, uh, important uh, question. So uh, um, we, are, we are focusing on that small molecules. Uh, in, the, in this case, uh, the molecules are uh, uh, smaller than 500 molecular weight. And that's the kind of uh, uh, you know, antivirals. Uh, cell penetration is, is, is key. So uh, cell penetration, that's the size of a uh, uh, molecule can penetrate cell without any active uh, like a transport, something like that. And then also uh, the cell culture model uh, is key to, to show initial screening. Of course, that right. uh, uh, enzyme assay is, is, is key, but the most important one is that cell culture screening is the key. So you, we utilize that uh, uh, like several different cell types to show uh, that hmm. that compound can inhibit viral replication. And also, of course, that uh, the next stage is that uh, animal model to show uh, that. And then, of course, for, for that, uh, pharmacokinetics is the key. Again, the small molecule uh, is the key for pharma like a stability of a compound in, in, in humans and then animals. So uh, bigger compound tended to degrade it easily, especially this is a, a peptidyl compound. So the site is uh, very important for determining pharmacokinetics. So you have to go through all this like a one by one to get uh, next uh, kind of stages. So we, we, we have done those for last 10 years uh, from the uh, like uh, enzyme assay to animal model. And then given that uh, uh, the natural infections with FIP. So, so we see a lot of those progress uh, in each steps. Terrific. Um... So I uh, 